boy. <laughs> What's going on, you guys? It's your boy, Three Stacks in this thing, baby. Representing Team Kings of Games. And today, I'm coming at you guys with some zesty spice, man. Uh, what I'm showcasing is Dragoonity Maids. So, like, the inspiration from this deck, I played an a, a actual Dragon Maid mirror match. And I was totally inspired. This dude was playing, like, a really weird Dragon Maid deck. That main deck, Super Poly. And he played, like, Dragoonity cards and just all kinds of weird stuff and he just made it work the inspiration i took from that was the dragoonity cards uh so like what i was thinking about when i realized it and i was like oh snap oh yeah that's right gay dirk searches a dragon or wing beast and insert and then like discards it so like one of the biggest problems when you play dragon maids right you don't open into parlor or chamber or kitchen kitchen is the worst one to be honest to start your combos off like she just kind of is Truth be told, she's the worst, and the most expensive one at that, which is weird. So, like, when you don't open Kitchen or Parlor, and you didn't already hard draw Changeover, it's kind of hard to start your engine. When your engine gets going, this deck can really snowball out of control, and I think it out-resources, like, a lot of decks. Like, there's so many. I don't, I can't think of one that can actually out-resource this deck, because I've out-grinded Altergeist to where they had no more Altergeist, like, monsters left in rotation. Uh, I've basically put, been put under a Buster Lock against Dragon Link and put him to a point where he had nothing to use anymore. Like, he just ran out of extra deck cards, and I just kept recycling, recovering, bouncing cards, and searching over and over. Like, literally surviving under Buster Lock, baiting the gates is crazy. Like, this deck is really good, but it has inherent consistency issues. Because when you think about the starters it has, you have three, six, nine starters, because this doesn't work unless you have one of those starters. Uh, like it works with nurse, but all you do is summon heretic and that means you have to wait a turn Hospitality is only as good as the target that you summon changeover only works when you have a, a like a high level and a lower level If you want to snowball other than that you summon house and pass so when you really think of it Dragon maids are like a good deck, but they don't have enough starters to make it consistent like to where you're always opening the combo so what my theory was to use the dragoonity cards instead of like the way that um like i saw like it being used i had a different approach my mindset was the dragoonity cards are going to bait hand traps which like is why gamma is pretty good in this deck because like ravine discard for cost screams ash blossom or ghost ogre to people um so it baits hand traps it baits negates but also when you open dragons of Vina remus what these are going to do is basically allow you to summon gator Use it, and especially because you don't use your normal summon for the combo. If you don't use your normal summon, so you could search for a dragon maid, uh, like chamber or parlor, discard a different dragon uh, from your hand, and then you can normal summon that dragon maid. So, like, the theory that I was talking about was basically to use Remus to search, and then use the Ravine to search Legatus, or when you open Ravine, either or. Special Legatus, Special Remus, Synchro into Gai Dirk, or Gay Dirk, and then use his effect to search Dragon Maid. And that's how you can get your combos going. Also, when you already have access to your Dragoon, I mean, not your Dragoonities, but your Dragon Maid cards that you need, you instead search Miss Valley Baby Rock, which was like another piece of like spice, and you just use it to make a Crystal Wing. So now you'll have like Show, Crystal Wing, Heretic Sphere if you have the extenders to do so, which is really, really cool. And whatever else you have in your opening hand. Uh, like, this also reinforces, like, playing to Nurse, because she's really good now. Like, if you have Nurse and, uh, like, uh, no other good Dragon Maids, you can use Gay Dirt to search the good Dragon Maid and then discard it, and then your normal summon will be Nurse, and you revive the card that you discarded off Gay Dirt. And at the end of your combo, you can still link Gay Dirt and one of the, the Maids into a Heretic Dragon of Heavenly Spears, so you can still consistently get to your Shao and also your Heavenly Spears. So, like, these basically are cards that search Dragon Maid, so they give you six more starters, which give you consistency. And then also playing Tempest is, like, another spice, because, like, Gold Sark and Tempest searches Parlor, and this also gives you, like, really good extenders to go into Heretic Spears, which gives you follow-ups, because Heretic Spears, like, snowballs, like, when you let it resolve. It's, like, such a good card in this deck. This deck is, like, one of the best strategies to play this card in. So, like, that was my theory behind it it baits hand traps and it allows you to play under nibiru around nibiru because you can summon crystal wing and then just do your uh your dragon mage shenanigans anyways and this also gives you access to an additional negate like if you had chamber dragon maid plus a high level dragon already you just do this to put crystal wing up and then you can put shao and depending on whether or not you open extenders like hospitality or world legacy guard dragon you can end up making sphere uh spheres crystal wing shao 
that's three interrupts plus like two follow-ups off of Xiao and also off of Spears, which is really good. And you can still lock your opponent out of their extra deck with Sloth via the Spears. So like, I like this. I think this is better than pure Dragon Maids because it's more consistent and it offers a different variety of interruptions and combos and things that the Dragon Maids just really didn't have before. So for the list, as you guys can see, I'm still main decking slot because this card just beats so many combo decks. And summoning it off of Spears, it means that it plays around Kaijus, Dark Road No More, sp um, Spear Mode, you know, Droplets if I didn't already say it. It plays around so many negates because like when your opponent Dark Rollers or Spear Modes your board or Droplets your board or, you know, does anything basically to negate your cards, Heavenly Spears can still tribute itself for cost and resolve its graveyard effect and lock your opponent out their extra deck. So like under Dark Ruler Droplets and etc, you can have Sloth plus like Tiding, which is like a really, really strong trap because it just bounces any card. Like, so this card's pretty broken. So like you also, um, not downtime, but Tiding, you also can get double bounce off of Spheres and like Tiding, which is really cool. And for hand chops, I'm playing three Ash, three Gamma and three Infinite and Permanence. Gamma is just to protect like the Remus and the Ravine plays. And then Imperm and Ash are like good against all the decks, but like um, I side Nibiru because I can't afford to play hand traps that are risky uh, in certain matchups where like it's not going to be good. Instead, I just side the Nibiru for like when I run into the decks that it's good against. Like it's worth main decking, but also you do play the risk of running into decks that you can't Nibiru and it's a dead draw. So then it's just like Ravine food. So I just wanted hand traps that could be used at all times, and this one's really good for protection. Uh, moving past that, Triple Chamber, uh, Triple Parlor, Triple Kitchen, Double Nurse for the Dragon Maid lineup. Chamber's the best one, because uh, like if uh, you guys didn't remember from my original Dragon Maid profiles, Chamber, her floating is the best floating because she can summon House and Xiao, and she summons all the other higher level ones, and also she searches your extenders and your follow-ups, and she searches your interruptions that play under Dark Ruler and Droplets, etc. So I just think she's the best one. She's also a one-card combo. Her and Parlor are one-card combos that make Heavenly Spears, because you use her to search Hospitality, and then basically uh, you link her off into a Guard Dragon Link, special summon her back off Hospitality, and make her ready. The same thing can be said with Parlor by dumping cleanup, link her off into a Guard Dragon because I don't play um, Striker Dragon in this list, and banish this, resummon her, and then you both of these are one card Spheres, and Spheres by itself is an interrupt plus a follow up, and you can snowball at that, which is really, really cool. Um, and then, like, one of each of the dragon forms, because, like, uh, now, you have more consistent access to these cards, they're more searchable than they were before, and you do get, in your standard combo, you get more access to higher level dragons, cards like Gaederic, and also Tempest, which is really cool. Uh, besides that, I do play Double Changeover. I think that Changeover is slept on as a 2-up. It's not just about the fact that it can be banished in the Elish matchup, which, that's a good matchup for this deck, because this deck can outgrind them. A lot of the times, I believe this deck's better. Um, but also, because the thing is, like, when you have changeover in Grave, and you're relying on its graveyard effect, and your opponent stops that, that prevents you from summoning Shao or House again for that turn. So, I like the second one, because, like, having the option of, like, basically, um, using the graveyard effect, and it getting negated, and then you can still use, uh, Chamber to search another one is really important. In fact, in one of my dual replays that I showcase on my channel... There was a duel that I basically, I had to have the second changeover. Like, if I didn't have it, I wasn't going to pull off what I pulled off. So I do disagree with players that just literally just ride and die on you only need one. Because they're talking about in theory, but I'm talking about in real life experience what came up with me and actual duels. Not just what I think is just, oh, I think it's never, you never need more than one. Because like the graveyard effect is good and all, but like don't forget that that can be interrupted and it really sucks when it does. And also having two, again, increases your odds of opening this card. Because when you hard draw changeover, it makes things just so much easier. Now, like, chamber getting impermed, etc. is okay. Triple Hospitality, this card is just busted. It's an extender and a foolish burial. I like Welcome a lot. I know a lot of Dragon Maid players don't like this card because I don't see a lot of them playing it. But I disagree with them because I believe in the grind game. I also like that you can dump this off parlor on your, your opponent's standby phase. And that automatically grants you protection from targeting effects, which is really, really good in certain matchups. And then the boost is relevant. And just the fact that you can loop your tidings and your uh, 
like your other Dragon Maid cards to constantly have hand advantage. And hand advantage in this deck re, uh, basically reestablishes as field presence, while your field presence reestablishes as hand advantage. Your hand and your field swap with each other because of the tagging out that the Dragon Maids do. So like when all your cards get summoned, they have effects, and then they bounce themselves back to your hand so you can summon them again. That's why this deck's follow-ups are really, really powerful, and this deck's really hard to kill in the grind. It's also really hard to OTK, because you have to like access code or dragoon the board first. Because the moment you enter battle phase, you have like multiple tag outs at that, which is really, really strong. World Legacy Guard Dragon is like a really, really crazy good extender. Just to combo off, because making Almirage and being back any one of the Dragon Maids to go into LP and move its zone starts off like a really good combo for you. Uh, and then I played Downtime, another card that Dragon Maid players just don't really play. I've seen lists of what I consider good players, and they still don't play this card. This card is also another reason why um, like summoning House after you've resolved Shao can still interrupt your opponent before your battle phase, because you have cards like this in Tidying, where like with Downtime, this also is like an inherent out to cards like Mystic Mind, etc. And also its effect allows you to snowball to control, because you have to think about it, not only are you triggering House to pop, but you're bouncing a spell trap or you're just getting a plus two. The reason why it's a plus two is because the cards you return is going to search another card. So you bounce a card to hand to search another card, and then both the cards you search normally can search more cards. So it can almost be a plus three, and that's every turn on your turn and your opponent's turn. So once downtime hits the field, it's going to be really hard to keep up. Not even salads, not ultra guys, not shit alls. And I love those, like I love shit alls, you know, and like dragon links. There's like no decks that I can think of, not Eldritch, that can keep up with the speed. Even if those decks can grind, they can't outpace as fast as Dragon Mates do it. Because Dragon Mates get it done like expeditiously. It doesn't happen like in the course of three turns. It's like one and done. Like you have your first turn set you up, your next turn, you'll have like a play where your first turn board. You'll have Shao, and you'll just have, like, a couple cards. You'll be like, oh, it's nothing impressive. It's just Shao Spear. Like, you'll just have Shao Spears. And then your next turn, your opponent's going to be looking at you like, why, where did those eight cards come from? Why is this field full? Why is this hand full? And how many times is he going to search? Like, it's crazy how you snowball with this deck. Because Shao and Spears equals into a full hand and a full board if you play your cards right. Like, just the fact... That like you can summon chamber on your opponent's standby, search hospitality. So let's just say, for example, your entire board gets broken. Like this is again, like these cards are so good. Your entire board gets broken, but you search hospitality on your opponent's turn. And they're like, haha, I bore sorted you, but you survived because you summon your big guys in defense, right? Whatever the case is, your board gets broken. Worst case scenario. You have hospitality, right? And you have changeover and grave. Follow-ups right there. You have tidying and grave. Follow-ups right there, because don't forget about tidying. It's an interrupt plus a follow-up, and the card that it summons gets bounced back to your hand, which is just broken. So it's like a plus two. So you have changeover and grave, tidying and grave, plus the hospitality that you searched off of chamber. So no matter what your top deck is, you have plays, I'm telling you. You have plays. So what one hospitality does for you in recovery is you activate hospitality. Special Summon Nurse. Nurse's effect can then Special Summon Chamber. You then can use Chamber to go ahead and get any card that you need. Then you can just activate Change Over's effect. Or even better, you could if you don't already have Clean Up and Grave. Like for whatever reason you don't have Tidying. You can activate Hospitality Special Nurse in her Dragon form. Special Summon um, Parlor. Use Parlor to send Tidying. Use Tidying to Special Chamber. Use Chamber to search another card you need. Activate Changeover to bounce it to hand. Into your battle phase, bounce those two cards to hand. And then now what you're looking at is you'll have four to five cards in hand. And you'll also have uh, two higher level Dragon forms uh, on your field. And all that gets accomplished off of one Hospitality that you just search on your opponent's turn. So like when I say Snowball, it's not an exaggeration on like out of nowhere. It's just like what the heck is going on with this board? Like this deck is just really strong, you guys. And Downtime is one of those cards. It plays under so many things. It's really good. This is one of the reasons why I don't play 3 Tiding is because I play Welcome. It's, it gives me more versatility to play around different cards, helps in certain matchups, and it also um, just allows me to recur things a little bit better than this deck already does that. Like, it already does that, but it, like this card's just so good. So, like, Downtime and Welcome are really slept on. I already talked about Hand Traps. I talked about the Dragoonity cards. Be careful. You can only summon Dragons with these, but it's fine because you mostly summon Dragons anyways. Like, once you resolve, like, the Remus effect, 
uh, Ravine. Uh, the Baby Rock is just to make Crystal Wing. Tempest is another great card in this deck. Dumping it off of uh, Ravine, it's a high level to summon Shao. It's a recurrable boss monster. It also really helps to extend into Spears. In addition to that, that's why I play Gold Sark because like you can Gold Sark Tempest and search out Parlor. So even more ways to access your Dragon Maids and then like the Gamma. So as you guys can see, like the list, I had a lot of um like hindsight plays behind this list and just um theory crafting and basically developing a list that's more consistent than other dragon maid lists i've seen just in the terms of searching out your dragon maids like when you really think about it without dragoonity maids you can't search your dragon maids without already hard drawing them so that means you can't really search them because hospitality doesn't search and if you think about it the only way you search them is when you open the ones that you already are trying to search you get what i'm saying like when you open kitchen or like parlor or chamber you already have the card that you would want to search but because you only place so many copies of those and you're not guaranteed to hard drawing them when you have six seven more ways to access them it's like you play 16 dragon maids now instead of the nine that are good and really you only have six that are really really good so that means six plus seven is 13 of the really really good ones because like gold star counts so like that's what i like about this list and just in general the thing with dragon maids is like they're so powerful that um, people will really underestimate what this deck does the battle phase is the best phase in this deck it's like your main phase three and this deck is just really really hard to otk like you can just deal with so much and like you have access to some really really powerful cards at that like, i just love this deck it's so good uh, as far as sighting goes i side nib lightning storm evenly uh nib is just to cover combo and you have like imperm gamma to like reinforce it lightning storm evenly back row combos and then this is a really good spicy tech guard dragon cataclysm when i know i'm going first this is a card that plays around droplets the thing with the point of the red lotus is your opponent can change droplets in response to it and like because droplets exist that's what kind of make a pointer sometimes not as good unless you play a deck that makes herald of the arc light then you can play a pointer and not have to worry about it so like I want to interrupts that can play around Dark Ruler droplets and Cataclysm is another one where like yeah you have tidying to bounce but like Cataclysm also is basically two pops and it's a trap and because you play Dragon Mates people will not normally side backward removal because when you think about it the traps that they will know that your R-Type plays they can't use back row, back row removal against the tidying and like stop it technically because you can still chain it unless they just flat out activate Lightning Storm calling traps and then you just use this graveyard effect to just special summon which is another thing that i forgot to mention that um when you use shao to special summon parlor and standby when you want to play around kaijus and droplets etc you dump tidying so now when they use anything to kill shao like let's say they droplets it and kill it let's say they kaiju it or whatever the thing is uh or like you know they pancreatops pop it and instead of wasting the negate of shao on pancreatops you just let it resolve and then you use tidying to bring it back from the grave so like that's another really cool interaction with like parlor on standby so like, this deck just has so many tricks up its sleeve i really like it and as you guys see i cite droll uh for like dragon link um dragon link and dinos um i think those are kind of hard matchups for this deck can this deck like, break hefty combo boards given a good like if you hard draw changeover life is easy easier because like changeover forces negates otherwise you summon shao uh, and you don't mind like just normaling a dragon maid and then like letting the other one get banished off arc light that just doesn't really matter a lot of the times uh and just baiting a negate and then just normal summoning a dragon maid no effect use changeover's graveyard effect can already bait two negates on top of like you having hospitality and guard dragon like so with a good hand yeah you can push um, but I just feel like because the certain decks can hand loop you and set up multiple negates, Joel and Lockbird and like Nibiru are kind of like super like mandatory for those decks. For the extra, I play Furious. This is actually like my tech um, that I was testing uh, inside of my. Uh, so I had a video of Dragon Maid's duels, basically where after I did my profile, I showcased Dragon Maid duels, and I was already playing this card. Uh, so you guys wanted an updated list. Like I was playing, I've been playing um, like this. And certain other techs for like a month and some change now i think like this card is just really good something i noticed with changeover's effect is that it actually can summon any dragon monster and i knew that's why i also was playing striker dragon because you could use chamber to summon striker dragon and then bring it back off hospitality and you already have two darks another really cool ending board that you can have is shao spheres and borlode furious 
So like the fact that you have haymakers is really really good because you have access to cards like Furious, Crystal Wing, Shao. House comes after Shao, and then you use Tidying and Downtime to trigger House to like machine gun your opponent's board. And this card is like an Omni Negate plus it turns into board wipes after that because House is not once returned and her effect is actually really really strong. Uh, like in both these, just in rotation, give you a lot of follow ups uh, on top of everything that they already do. Uh, and then we play two of each card dragons. I play Heretic, and then I play Amrash. I chose Romulus as like another card that really helps. This card is so scary, like because Dragon Links play Dragon Mate cards in their strategy. When you make Romulus, they'll think you're on Dragon Link because you will see Dragon Link decks playing Chamber and Hospitality, and sometimes even Parlor and Tidying. Like Dragon Links have just played so many different cards in their deck. So like when you activate Romulus, this would make people want to hand trap it because they're really scared. Uh, and then Gatorick and then Crystal Wing. To sum up the list, uh, if you guys want a deeper insight, I strongly, and I mean I strongly recommend that you watch my other Dragon Maid deck profile before you watch this one, because that one had more insight on the basically the blueprint and the uh, playstyle of how Dragon Maids operate. Uh, this one I didn't go as in depth because this is an update for a profile I already did. So if you guys want to learn more about Dragon Maids, including like you know like the the Dragon forms and like how like the the names, you could just find the name. Uh, look into my Dragon Maid profile that I have on my channel, and also look up the video that's called "This May Won't Make You Want to Play Dragon Maids After Watching This Video," because you guys will see me destroying Dragon Link, destroying Dogmatica Invoke, out grinding Alter guys. You guys see me playing against Meta, not tier tier three decks like actual tier one and tier two decks, and beating them downright. Um, another duel I really want to showcase you guys is when I played against Dragon Link. He full comboed and then set up an extra deck lock against me. Not only did I bait all his negates, but I ended up beating him in the long run. I outpaced him. Cleanup was just so good to me that duel. I ended up putting him in a situation where he didn't have more resources than me. And he lost like his strongest plays. And I still was just dropping Haymaker after Haymaker. It got down to a point where Crystalline, Shao, and Spears hit this field. After he put out his best negators and I clean his clocks, then I put out my best negators. So like that just goes to show that this deck does have competitive potential. I truly believe in this deck. I think this is one of the best decks like that I've ever played. It's one of the funnest and its playstyle really suits me as a duelist. It like really matches like the kind of decks that I would gravitate towards. That's the video. I'm going to say a quick prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Lord Jesus Christ. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread, Lord Jesus, and please forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever. And I rebuke you, Satan, in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind every demonic influence, every negative influence, anything that exalts itself against God, I rebuke it, I cast it down. And everything that we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven, and anything we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. These are the promises of Christ Jesus. And I come against anything that is not like Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Deuces.